Because what we've ended up with is a feminism that benefits men more than it does women. It's all this pole dancing for exercise. Sex work is work. Trans women are women. All of those issues are really crucial for feminists to get a proper grip of. So take the issue of prostitution. The discourse around this from the faux feminists, mm. Ash Sarkar and all of her mates, is sex work is work. Um, it's a job. It's a profession. I mean, when I did a talk on prostitution and the horrors of the global sex trade at a feminist conference in October, there were a load of blue fringes outside banging and screaming at the window, shouting, blow jobs are real jobs. What? <laughs> right, you don't, you don't do it then, mate. You go and get an unwashed dick into your mouth and tell me that you'd rather do that eight times a day than be a researcher or an academic or a journalist or whatever. Why the hell are you supporting something that has such a horrendous effect on millions of women around the world and sets a context where women's bodies are seen as orifices to rent and to sell? You know, it's an appalling issue that many sex trade survivors, so women who've actually done prostitution, mm are now, thankfully, educating the world about the realities of this. You know, I know loads of the women, I've interviewed hundreds of them, and they will say, look, when I was in prostitution, I used to say, hey, I love my work, fuck off, don't you dare judge me. Of course you do. I mean, you're, you're coping in, in a horrific situation. But when they get out, and if they're supported enough to be able to do that from other women, then they'll say, it was hell and no woman should have to go through this. And yeah, of course, you've got the odd exception. There's always an exception, isn't there? The Brooke Magnanti, Belle de Jour type. She's, you know, funding her PhD. She prostitutes from uh, five-star hotels on Park, Park Lane. She's totally atypical. She's a tourist, right? And yet she speaks with authority, just like those women who aren't feminists, but call themselves feminists. I mean, I've known women who say, I'm a feminist, I did sex work, blowjobs are real jobs. Mm. And when you look into what she's actually been involved in, she was doing uh, her doctoral studies mm. on phone sex lines. So she sat on the end of a phone sex line for six weeks saying, yes, I've got my tits out. Have you got your dick out, big boy? Hopefully not with that intonation, <laughs> Julie, because that's not a very good service. <laughs> Is that not how they talk? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, maybe some people might like yes, to... big boy. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to excite your viewers. You've got to put some heart into it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to excite your viewers. I have a friend who, when I make the wanking sign, she always says, I'm not doing it right. And I say, how should I know? I've been a lesbian since forever. <laughs> I see what you're saying. They're not people who've experienced yeah. the horrors of the sex trade yeah. in the way that the women you're trying to protect mm -hmm. and stand up for and defend and advocate for actually experience. Mm -hmm. So if you get an academic who, who sits on the phone line for a few mm -hmm. months talking, that's not the same as, you know, being a street prostitute with all of that, all, well, everything it, but that But also entails. More, more than that even, some of them just masquerade. Some of them lie. Some of them are. I really do call them tourists. In it, mm. they they nip in and out of it, and then mm. they adopt the label. So, I was in Nevada, um, where in certain counties within the state of Nevada, um, they've had legal brothels forever, um, beginning with a gold rush, and of course, Dennis Hoff, uh, the biggest pimp in the world, who thankfully is dead now, mm. who was a real piece of work, who ran these brothels and uh, terrorised the women. And he, he was, you know, seen as just this great businessman. He was normalising the sex trade. He was making it into a great profession. And he said yes when I asked if I could go and research his brothels. Mm -hmm. Clearly hadn't Googled me. <laughs> um, I rock up and he's trying to be Mr Charming and uh, said, you can interview my girls. But he'd primed them to, you know, he, these women, they, they live in these brothels for months on end. Um, they're not there because there's another choice waiting for them. Mm. They're there because that's the only way they can make money and they need that money. And many of them are double pimped, so their pimps send them to the legal brothels where the pimps are businessmen. Mm. So it's a horrific system mm. and the women are no safer than, than under any other kind of, you know, criminalised regime. So... 
when I was there and saw the reality of it, and the women told me it was like a, one of them said it was a pussy penitentiary. You, you can't even leave the brothel unless you're with an assistant pimp to go into town. You have your blood test every week to see if you've got any STIs and your name with the results are put up for all to see at the reception area. You do a line up when the Johns, the punters come in and you have to stand there not smiling, and wait until they pick you. I mean, just like cattle. And in the meantime, there's uh, somebody at the University of Nevada who's doing her PhD on sex work. And in order to research it, she goes into the brothels, turns a few tricks, does a few johns, and uh, interviews the women and then leaves and completes her PhD and says, hey, I'm a sex worker. And guess what her PhD was on? It was on the ability of women to orgasm during sex work. And she found that if you're over 40, you're more likely to orgasm during sex work than if you're under 40. I think that's the way around. But imagine doing that. Imagine taking years out of your life to show something that is blatantly untrue by asking a woman, do you enjoy when you have sex with a punter? Well, guess what they're going to say? I love it. I love my job. And this is now a PhD thesis that will be read by young students who are being fed this sex work is work bullshit, while books like mine on prostitution and other critical feminists um, are having trigger warnings put on them in some universities because we say it's abuse of women, it's a human rights violation. It's crazy. This is such a good point, Julie, because if you remember the case of Durham University, mm -hmm. which was... Now, correct me if I'm getting it wrong, but they were advising students how to yes. go into sex work and how to do it safely. That's right. And these are girls of 18, 19, 20. Now, they may be adults, but you're not telling me that someone of 18, 19 is aware of the full ramifications of this type mm. of work, particularly in the internet age. And if that was my daughter, I would personally drive... Oh, I can't drive. I'd get the train myself <laughs> in order to strangle them. Yeah. Because to me, that is abuse. Why is it we have just normalised this and all of a sudden we're like, hey, an 18, 19 year old girl, yeah. come in. Yeah, exactly. Mainly because of academics. But they are, many of them take funding directly from the sex trade mm. to do this research. And of course, what the, the pimps and the, you know, the, the profiteers want is blanket decriminalisation and total normalisation. Because of course they do. I mean, this is just about profit. It's about money for them. So for Durham University to say, here's how you become uh, safe in sex work, is like telling some bloke that he should go and work in an asbestos-ridden factory and here's how to wear proper protective gear. It's not safe. It's not safe under legalisation. It's not safe under any regime except for where you're actually throwing the kitchen sink at the women to help them get out. And the idea that universities are encouraging this. When for many women, working class women, the women that could well have ended up being sexually exploited, see education as a way out of that and something to give them better opportunities. It's, it's disgraceful. And they, they don't want to do it. So the academics in their ivory towers, why don't they just set up a brothel? Why are they on an academic salary?